Welcome back to Jupiter in the 10th house series. We're on episode two, so we're going to be looking at Jupiter in Aries 10th house, and we will use the example chart of the great artist Salvador Dali. In episode one, we got a basic big picture idea of what Jupiter in the 10th house should represent. And we can summarize that in these kind of shorthand keywords. Jupiter in the 10th house symbolizes someone who is sage-like, transparent, and famous. Knowing that, let's move on and ask what Jupiter in Aries represents. I've already published a video on Jupiter in Aries. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to follow up and go into more details. Right here and right now, we can just summarize it with those kind of shorthand keywords again. That Jupiter in Aries is someone who is competitive, they're very confident, and they're non-conformist. They have a lot of ambition. They make decisions pretty easily, or they're very decisive. They're not scared. They don't really mm, fit in easily. Now that we know this much, we can sort of sort out what Jupiter in the 10th house in Aries is going to basically be like by just comparing these two sets of shorthand keywords. But before we do that, there's one more source of information that we should really explore. This is the fact that if Jupiter is in Aries in the 10th house, then it must be the lords of the 9th and the 6th. And this is one of the beautiful things of the whole sign house system, which I recommend using. So the ninth house is very harmonious, but the sixth house is very struggly or competitive. And the tenth house is the public. So what does it signify to have the sixth and the ninth house be the same planet and be in the tenth house? We can summarize it with the simple word nonconformist. You struggle to find harmony with the society or you struggle to be in harmony with society will also will mean that you compete a lot and you compete kind of well. Now with these three sets of informations about what's going on with Jupiter in the 10th house in Aries, we can really get a good picture of how we should interpret it. So first of all, we have the word nonconformist in two of these lists. Jupiter in Aries is nonconformist and the 6th and ninth Lord in the 10th house is nonconformist. So you can be sure. Right? That Jupiter in Aries in the 10th house signifies a person who is nonconformist. Nonconformist means you struggle to fit in with the normal groups. You tend to feel like the weird one or the odd one, and you tend to get left out also. But because you're nonconformist, that's kind of okay by you. Because you don't even really want to be in those groups because you don't really want to look the same way everybody else does, talk the same way everybody else does, think the same way everybody else does. Another thing you notice in two columns is the word competitive. Jupiter in Aries is very competitive and ambitious, and the sixth and ninth lord in the tenth house is very competitive and competes well. So if Jupiter is in Aries in the tenth house, it really symbolizes somebody who's really competitive. How will that present itself in real life interactions and things? This person will challenge the proposals that are made. So what usually happens is no matter what you say, they'll argue with it. Even if you say something that they kind of believe in, because of the way their mind works, they'll respond in kind of a challenging way. But the interesting thing is that in, in most cases, they also they don't have necessarily a very tough skin. So even though, though they're very challenging, they feel easily challenged and therefore easily provoked into challenged confrontational situations. One final thing is that Jupiter in Aries is really confident and Jupiter in the 10th is very sage-like. Sage-like essentially means leaderish in some way, leaderish in a Jupiterian way. And confidence is very leadership -y because confidence makes decisions and decisions makes a leader. And therefore, we expect Jupiter in Aries in the 10th house to be a person who's, let's say, excellent. In the literal sense of the word excellent, they excel. So they have many talents or traits which are superior to the norm. And they don't really like to be in any kind of following positions. They like to be in the leading positions.
So, as I said, Salvador Dali, the great painter, is a famous example of somebody with Jupiter and Aries in the 10th house. He really does, you know, illustrate these principles quite well. He's so nonconformist, right? He's like the epitome of nonconformity. He's also quite challenging to the norms, and he's certainly quite excellent. Also, you can see how he's sage-like too, right? Because he's an artist, an artist is, is like a type of intellectual. If we look at his chart in more detail, we can try to figure out why is he so artistic? Is it Jupiter in the 10th house in Aries that's making him artistic? Not really. The openness of Jupiter and the openness of the 10th house helps an artistic person to be able to express and communicate their inner ideas and inspirations. But it's not really that Jupiter in the 10th house is going to create people like like uh, right. Salvador Dali uh, on a, any kind of a regular basis. What's going on with Salvador Dali and with every artist almost always you want to see or you will see the third house and the 11th house and the 5th house link up tightly. This is because the 11th is the house of performance, the 3rd is the house of skill, and the 5th is the house of creativity. So it's very obvious in Salvador Dali's case, because he literally has the 3rd Lord joining the 5th Lord, joining the 11th Lord in the 11th house, and to top it off, the 11th house is the artistic sign of Taurus. We can also ask, why is he so famous? Sure, we said that Jupiter in the 10th house has a baseline plus to famousness, but is it going to necessarily make everybody who has Jupiter in the 10th into a world famous something? Not really. You have to have other things going on in the chart to support it. So, for example, in Salvador Dali's case, his first lord, the moon, is joining his ninth lord, Jupiter, in the 10th house. So that's a very big uh, combination or yoga called the Raja Yoga. And the Raja Yoga is very, very instrumental in... Um, getting that 10th house effect of influence and, and fame and notoriety. So with this, you can see how an individual chart modifies the basic template of Jupiter and Aries in the 10th house, which was to be nonconformist, competitive, and excellent. And in turn, you can see how that basic template of Jupiter and Aries in the 10th house is a modification on the fundamental idea of Jupiter in the 10th house representing sagacity or sagaciousness and transparency and famousness. If you want to understand the whole context of your chart, the soil in which your interpretive seeds grow, then visit my website vicdecara.com and click readings. My complete chart report explains each and every nook and cranny of your chart and will keep you occupied in self-discovery for years. I also have two groundbreaking new reports. The first of these, Your Nakshatra, organizes your active nakshatras in order of their importance to you and presents the fundamental interpretations for the planets that occupy them. And the newest report, Star Strength, uses a system called Tarahabala to unfold 90 interpretations of the nuanced relationships between all the planets in your chart, which paints a rich and detailed picture of how your various strengths cooperate or compete with each other. Order these or any of my reports and accelerate your journey to deeper self-understanding.